Hey guys, I'm Kimmy from Modern Techniques and this is our boot camp hairstyling for my young assistants that are absolutely winners. We call them rock stars because they rock it. Uh, they got out of school. Some of them went to three years in high school and graduated and then some of them took a nine month course and graduated. So I would love for you guys to meet my awesome angels. Come on up girls. This is Gianna and she came from Old High School. Hi. And how long did you go for school for? Um, well, I went all four years for high school, but the cosmetology program was three years. It was sophomore, junior, and senior year. Great. And how'd you like it? I loved it. It really helped me. Good. So that's our Gianna. Now we're going to have Lizzie. OK, Lizzie, where did you graduate high school? High oh, school? Yeah. Um, I went to a vocational school, but not for cosmetology. Ah, see, she could have though. Cosmetology and vocational actually is a class, so and a course, but she didn't take it. So when did you take uh, hair school? I went after I graduated high school. I went to Paul Mitchell. Okay, so Paul Mitchell, how much did you pay? Um, like eighteen thousand dollars. Was and how was it? I personally feel like the school cared more about making money than our education. I feel like I've definitely learned a lot more here than I did while I was in school. Yeah, so I do think that uh, nine months of school is not always so easy because there's a lot to learn, a lot to learn about hair. So I do believe that really them going to school, there's a foundation that they learn. So that's why too, Lizzie's been here how long now? Almost two years. Yeah, and she has grown tremendously and you're, you're pretty much on the floor about how much percent? Um, I would say like 80%. Yeah, she's rocking it. And she's a precisionist because I do also behavioral um, assessments as well. And she's a precisionist. So it took her a little bit longer in her training and her learning uh, because of that precisionist. And that that's a whole nother video to share with you guys. Um, but she really takes it in and absorbs and learns it. And then she becomes like a perfectionist. And she has really, really A plus work. Um, not that everything's an A+, because there's so much to learn. But I'll tell you what, what she has learned, she's mastered. So it's been great. Thank you so much, Lizzie. And then we're going to have uh, Jenna. Hello. Hi, Jenna. So when did you graduate high school? Um, 2018. And where did, you, where did you go for school? So nine months after, I decided to do cosmetology, and then I went to the Salon Professional Academy. And how'd you like it? I loved it. Um, I felt like I did learn a lot there, but I feel like now I'm learning like more in-depth things. Yeah, so their experience was pretty good. Uh, her and Francesca, I'm gonna bring you up here, Francesca. Mm -hmm. So this is Francesca, yeah. and when did you graduate? Um, 2018. And how about hair school? Um, yeah, I went to T-Spot too, like nine months after, yeah, same time. <laughs> um, so the two of them had nine months, but they actually had a lot of customers. What do you think about the customers? What do you think about the experience you got? How did it work for you guys? I think that it definitely helped with like building knowledge on how to talk to mm -hmm. people. Like good communication yeah. skills, like learning like what kind of questions to say, like knowing like right off the bat like how to introduce yourself, how to like market yourself in a way, like showing them your, like, your Instagram, like making sure like mm -hmm. we had like things like follow us like here. So Great. and they were always like, oh, like you have an Instagram page. And like I would literally see them look at my page in mm -hmm. the chair. And that yeah. was like so cool about it. That's awesome. So it's good to see different experiences of what you can do and what you can have. But the truth is, you can't learn everything in school. Mm -hmm. um, Gianna and, and Lizzie, I want you guys to come up here. So how much do you think you learned at school, Gianna? Like what, did, what was your experience of clients coming in? Did you get to do clients? Um, well, we did get to bring clients in on Fridays. It was for just for the seniors though. But learning wise, I feel like I learned just the like bare minimum just for state board and all that. Not really anything in depth that I really needed okay. on the floor. So, and, and that's the thing though, but she passed that state board the first time? Yes. Right? It's not always easy to pass that state board. Lizzie, what about you? How much did you learn in school? Did you take any clients? I did occasionally, but I feel the same way as Gianna where I, I really only learned the bare minimum. Um, so what about your test? You taking the test, did they train you for the test as well? They definitely did not. I had to go back to school after I graduated for like, like there were weeks where I would go like every week and like try to practice and like there was really no one to help. So I, I feel like I basically taught myself how to pass the test. The first time I took it, I failed, but then the second time I finally passed it. 
Yeah, and for me, my daughter also went for school. We both went to the same school, Obert High School. I did pass mine right away. When my daughter went, she didn't pass her. She actually failed it five times. I had to get a tutor for her, and then she finally passed it. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Um, and how long did it take for you guys to pass? We didn't. Um, we so you're in the midst in. right now? Yeah, I'm waiting for them to email me about oh. the state board. So they just took the, the first okay. part of it. There's two parts to the test. All right, good. So this is my girls. These are winners. How do you like the boot camp so far? How much have you learned in a short amount of time? And shadowing yeah, the girls too. Like so a really big part of like learning, even like with the Mondays too. Like we have that on top of like shadowing the girls and like they're basically training us in their own way too. So which is cool. I definitely learned like new, like we learned foundation in school. So we learned the basic way on how to do stuff. So like when we're here, it's like there's so many different weaving techniques and different notching and texturizing. There's just so much that we do. So it's like crazy to see how like you do one haircut and it's all straight lines. And then you teach us with the point cutting and then it's so blended and nice. Makes a difference, yeah, right? Yeah, it makes such a difference. I always say the small things matter. You know, we could just do a perfect haircut. And I'm telling you, when you do a perfect haircut, a lot of times it doesn't look so perfect. It looks actually choppy because there's no softness to a haircut. So for the girls, we've been, I, I have learned from Bumble and Bumble in New York City for about 15 years. For my other salon that I was at for 19 years, they did a ton of training with us. We did um, Orbe, Bumble and Bumble, Fido, um, Wella. Now we're doing Davines. So done years and years of experience of many different uh, color lines and haircutting, definitely amazing, amazing artists as haircutters and colorists. So um, also, how do you guys like the boot camp, and how are you doing? Lizzie, you've learned the most because you've been here two years. Mm -hmm. How do you think the shadowing went for you? What mattered the most? Um, I feel like it was really helpful to shadow each stylist that we have because every stylist does things differently. Um, for example, like you might, you're very like, free-handed and texturizing, whereas like Nicole is like a lot more of like a precisionist. And she is a precisionist, mm -hmm. right? So that makes a difference too. Because I've done all their wiring, all my girls, we know how they're all wired. Uh, what, what does that mean? That means that behaviors are predictable and uh, we've learned their behavior, skills of the way that they process information. And it has made a big difference to know those things because you know who could learn quicker, who needs to take more time, who needs more information, who needs just the quick basic foundation. It really makes a difference. So um, that has been in very informative for you, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's tools that she's learned because each person does do it different from their own education and learning. So they also have learned uh, she's learned Nicole's way, who's a precision. Sarah's a, an, an, uh, I think she's an advisor, um, an advocate. Oh, yeah, Gina's an advocate. So Gina's like an all-around general doctor. Nicole and Sarah are also balayage specialists. Like, they really love that balayage. Gina does foliage. My daughter does foliage, extensions. We do so many awesome things here, but everybody still has their own sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And that's what they learn, the sweet spot. Jana, what do you think about learning everybody's? Um, I think it's so cool to see how different everyone is and with their own style. And I have been at two salons before, prior to working here, and I have learned more in the three months I've been here than I have at, the, at those two other salons. Yeah, makes a big difference. And you know why? Because we believe in education. Education is knowledge. The more you learn, the more you understand, and the better you get at whatever you do. You become a pro by more education. So thank you girls so much. And then we're gonna get into our color theory. So we are gonna do a whole entire course about color. What's important is there are laws to color and color is all the same. Um, whether you are an artist, a hairstylist, we do color on hair, that's our canvas. So when an artist paints on a canvas, we're just doing it literally on hair. So I want, these are for my girls, primary colors that we have are yellow, blue, and red. So, so important. They never change. These are the only colors that you cannot make up. They are automatically made up. And then uh, the law of color is a true law that can never be changed. 
So there's always three primary colors to color. You can't make them, you can't, you can change them and you can make a million different colors out of these three colors. Isn't that amazing? So it's yellow, blue, and red. When you mix blue and red together, the law is it turns to purple. So you can mix more blue, less red, and then it makes a darker shade of purple. If you mix more red, it makes a lighter shade of purple. It's amazing the colors that you could do. So that is for that. And then the color wheel. Doesn't matter what color wheel that you use. There's so many, many different color wheels. And basically it's really teaching you the law of color. It, it all still comes back from the primary three colors all of these so here we go here's yellow there's blue and there's red right you guys have your your um paper so you guys could follow with me on the back is just the different shades of yellow different shades of red and different shades of blue it still has these and these are in between so when you mix these two then you get red orange orange more of that when you mix uh these two you get the greens. And then when you mix these two, blue and red, you get purple. So that is for that. So that's your, right here, right? No matter what color chart, but it's always the same. This is so important because this is gonna be about hair and, and tones. And I always want you guys to understand that yellow, red, blue, if you're trying to cover up and make neutral, which here's a neutral shade, it's all of them. You mix blue, red, and yellow together and you have um, neutral and that's beige. So it kind of cancels everything out and you have a nice neutral. So that's why for our color, when we use a zero, it's always neutral. It's all the colors. Tones. Now these I want to show you and I want to show you different ones. So this one is Clairol. This is Wella. And these are levels and tones of hair. You guys have one of these on your station. No matter what line you use, this is our favorite color line, one of our favorites, Davines. It's all natural, but they have it as well. So the reason why I want you to really understand this is because every color line has levels and then tones, which are red, blue, yellow, which are all these. These are our tones, these are our levels. So you got one is black, two is like almost black, three is like a dark chocolatey brown, four is a brown, five is a medium brown, six is a light brown, seven is a dark blonde, eight is a medium blonde, nine is a blonde, and then there's light blonde. So those are levels. So when we are doing somebody's hair, the reason why we, we go, to, we have to lift up their hair and we need to match what level we're using because that's gonna matter what color we use to get to what level we wanna go to. So here we go dark medium and light jenna i want you just to share how many are in the light color like right here huh there's three look look right here it's eight nine and ten okay so that's the level number yep so see it's in the lighter so when you want to say like and somebody's like oh i i want light blonde you're going to know how many levels you have to lift in medium color seven six five four and then in dark three two one this is good to know. You guys have this. And then, um, yeah. And it, again, this is another, another way to look at it. Black, black, brown, brown, medium brown, light brown. Then it goes orange. These are pigments. This is a doozy. These are pigments that live underneath hair color. So what does that mean? That's this baby right here. And every single hair has this wonderful undertone. Doesn't matter what color line you're using. This is the key and this is the most important thing. 
I learned from a guy, Roy Peters, his name was, he taught me color when I was so nervous because I used Goldwell in this one company. And then I went to Redkin and then we went to Wella. And I remember from, from Goldwell to Redkin, I'm like, oh no, I don't get it. I don't understand. It doesn't matter. Color is color. The only thing that you have to learn is what tones you're using. Uh, like what level system? I mean, not tones, what level system? Tones are always the same and you just pick and play with tones. Color levels, sometimes there's a one or there's a two, but it's just one's a little bit blacker and a, list, a little bit less blacker. So important to understand, doesn't matter what color line you're using, it always is the same principles. Now this is Shades EQ, okay? And again, they have it up here. These are the different tones up top. And then here are the levels. And they always have a little tiny thing. Every color line also has these colors in here for a purpose and a reason. And I want you guys to learn why. Do you, does anybody know why? They have these over here. So it is, again, the 10. The 10 is the lightest blonde. It's this, except they, love, they number it. Right, so one is black, black, brown, brown, has the same thing. And then they have the blue to purple, to red, to orange, to yellow, to blonde. And then it has also just the corrective color that anything that you need to put in if you had to fix something. All right, so the color wheel also is used by so many people, interior decorators and designers, digital graph artists, makeup artists, fashion designers, painters, photographers, magazine editors, furniture designers, jewelry designers, chefs, landscapers. It's amazing. Web designers especially. So many things are color, you know? And so when we're coloring hair, we need tone. So Francesca, you wanna come up here, honey, and just tell us what tone is? Um, the tone is the warmth or coolness of a color. Uh, tones equal warm, cool, or neutral. When choosing a hair color, you must choose the tonal end result desired by your guest. Thank you. So these are the tones. So what I love to do is this is a new color. We don't really use that anymore so much, but we use mask a lot. I put these in the back so that my girls know right away what's in the color before they use it. So important. And then Wella, we did as well and it's basically so vitally important to understand this because it does go with all of these. These are our tones. See, we have a 622, that's violet, violet, why? Because we're using mask. What's a two? Violet, there we go, iris, purple and it has a little bit of blue in there and this is supposed to be purple. <laughs> um, so it has a little tiny bit of blue in there, but it makes that nice purple. And that's why we use the color wheel because here is purple, right? Violet. You need to know what tone level system the hair um, product has. Like any color line has a system. That's all you need to know. Because if you know what tone, when you're trying to fight gold, which is yellow on here, you go to the opposite side of your color wheel to figure it out. So Gianna, what color would you use if you're trying to get rid of yellow? Purple. Yeah, purple. You just do the opposite. If you're trying to get rid of orange, what color would you use to get rid of orange? Blue. Yep, blue. And it's that simple because tones, when you go from black, black to blonde, what wonderful color lives in there? The color that nobody likes. Orange. Everybody says, what do they call it? Brassy. Yes. He says, in a blonde, they're like, I don't want brass. Don't lift me up brassy. I don't want gold. I don't want gold. I don't want gold. Right? Brass and gold, they think, are the same. They're not necessarily the same, but it looks like almost rusty water. Yes. So that's why it's so important to understand when you have rusty water, you need your wonderful, wonderful chart to get rid of rusty water. So Francesca, what color would you get rid of this orange? What would you use? What would be the best color to use? Blue. Yes, blue, because it's the opposite 
on your color wheel. You always go to the opposite. Now, if it's like, let's say it's light orange, then you, you could use a little bit less blue, you use blue and purple together. So that is so cool. Now this one's a little bit of a cheater because this is a great, great, great color wheel because it gives you like all the great information that you need right away. Just tells you on the back. You're like, oh, I like that. Okay, so I use yellow orange to cut red, right? Um, or I mean green, I'm sorry. So yeah, it shows you right here. If you have yellow, you have these tones, you wanna turn it around, you are gonna use green, 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 green. I'm gonna show you girls the tones real quick. Now these are in like the browns, okay? So no matter what color line, because the difference of Wella, which is a little bit different, I think the only difference is, they're similar though, is uh, number one is blue ash and this one's gray. Uh, two is green, two is iris. So you see they're a little bit off, but most of the time three, majority of color lines three is gold and majority of color lines four is red. But, if, but you need to know that. That's like an absolute must. Absolute need to know that because you can't do these the same. You won't get the same result if you don't learn the tones that the color line put together. Super important. That's the only most important thing that you need to know, that you can learn any color line, any, as long as you know the tones and what number they are. So now I'm gonna show you the one, zero, is a neutral. And that just cancels out everything. There's all the colors in there, so it just makes one neutral color. It's like a beige. And then, whether you have this is a three zero, that zero in the second number, the first number is always your level. This is a level, first number. These are your levels, and that's actually a zero, or actually here's your levels. Okay, you guys could look at your levels. The zero is always neutral. And that's what's nice to know that um, I love neutrals. Neutrals always cover gray, 100%. So you always have to have zero in a coverage for gray. I would say 80% of the time, um, some color lines you could use a three after and you, it could still cover gray. It'll put a lot of shine in there because three is reflective because it's gold. Otherwise, you're really sticking with neutral to cover any gray, like 100% neutral will always guarantee that. Sometimes you want a little bit of color in there, or if you're trying to fight brass, if people lift up a little red or warm, you're gonna use an ash with a zero. You could do equal parts of something else. But I wanna show you this. The second number here on these is a 3232. Two, three two. So we would go to the Daveness because this is their color tone. What, Jenna, would be number three? What would be the second primary color in here? After the tone, we already have the level. The first number is the level. So, second number? So level seven and then with gold and purple, like iris? Correct, with gold and purple. Second numbers, you just look here, what's a number two and what's a number three? These two are mixed in this color. When you guys do, because we're gonna also, we have paints, you guys are gonna paint these two together and see what it looks like, because then you're gonna know. And you're gonna use a white, we love to use construction paper to think of hair. So a white piece of paper would be a white blonde highlight. A yellow piece of paper would be yellowish highlights. Orange piece of paper would be orangey highlights. Uh, and then you would do a little darker, a little darker, right? And then we'll have a black piece of construction paper for black hair, brown for brown hair, red for red hair, orange. That is such a good way to learn. You will know any color line if you guys learn the laws of color. Okay, now I'm gonna show you Shades EQ. Okay, Shades EQ is the same thing. The difference is they actually have a number, which is the level, and then the G would stand for gold, right? They just said that a V would stand for Violet. Violet, exactly. And that's the difference with Shades EQ. 
And so one more thing that I have to teach you though too, there's different textures of color. Shades EQ is sheer. You can really see through that, you know? You can really kind of see through this sheer curtain, okay? Shades EQ is sheer. Illumina is the same thing. It's sheer, it's illuminating. This has a level, and this just doesn't have like the, the six, but you tell me in Wella, what is a level six? Violet. Violet. Right? So you know that, what color is this, Lizzie? It's a nine. What's a nine in the level? Like the first number. The lightest blonde. The lightest blonde. Almost the lightest blonde. It's the next one. 10 is like the lightest. Yeah. So nine is the level. And then what's the six? Violet. Violet. And what's the zero? Neutral. Good. Neutral. So you got a violet and a neutral. What do you think violet and neutral would be? If you mix neutral and violet together. It would cut out any warm tones still in the hair and make it a little bit like icy, ashy. Excellent. Ice. Correct. With a, and it would sheer out the purple, make it a little sheer. Now, because if we use Shades EQ or Illumina, it's a sheer color. Remember a sheer curtain. It's going to be soft. It's not going to be opaque. Anything that's sheer, do you think it's a little lighter or is it a little darker if it's sheer? Lighter. Right, it's lighter. So when you're using these two, you're gonna know it's a little lighter. It's not gonna be opaque, right? So now this color line is opaque. Okay, so we have, Jenna, I want you to tell me what four, what's the level four there? But what what num what do you think that is? Like copper. Um, I want you to look on your thing. So look at a four on this chart right here. It's like coppery brown. So that's the undertone. Think of what the uh, level is. Uh, medium brown. Medium brown. Mm -hmm. Good. What's the second number? Okay, now we would need this. And that's blue ash. Blue for the first one, for number four. Four, and then the one is a blue ash, right? Yeah. Yep, blue ash, perfect. So what color do you think that would be like? So it would be a medium brown, but with that like ashiness to it. Correct. It wouldn't have so much warmth in there, right? And those are cool colors. Do you know, does anybody know what the cool colors are? Blue, green, and purple. purple. Cool colors, blue, green, and purple. You mix any of them together, you get all cool colors. What are warm colors? And I love to always memorize warm colors by the fall. Mm -hmm. Fall tree, foliage is what colors? Red, orange, yellow. Bam, red, orange, yellow. Those are our warm for fall colors. So when somebody says, my hair is red, just say, well, it's warm, right? It's warm. Warm sounds nicer. Let's just be nice, right? Um, and then they're like, I don't want warm. So then what will we use if we don't want warm? Neutral. What tones? We could use neutral cool or cool tones. Yep. And neutral is always a great way that if you don't want to go to the extreme to make it more ashy or uh, blue or violet, you could use neutral. So now, Gianna, what is the first level in this right here, number seven? seven. You're looking for the level of the color of somebody's hair. Medium blonde. What's the second color? Um, the six, and that's red. And then the third color is a four, which is copper. So what do you think this box of color is right in here? Um, maybe medium blonde, red, copperish. Yeah, it'd be like a strawberry, copperish color. See how easy it is? When you know this, that's why I put this and I hang this up in our back room. So, so awesome. So when you're looking at these numbers, you know exactly what you're pulling out. Exactly. Lizzie, what color do you think this is? What's an eight? Level eight would be like a dirty blonde. Mm -hmm. um, and then a four is copper and a six is red. So I would assume that it's like a strawberry blonde. Strawberry blonde, yep. Be a four, six. It's gonna have that red and that uh, 
copper and red mixed together. So that's why when you take paints on your, um, with the primary colors and you mix, uh, you mix a four and a six together. You mix some copper and some red. How do you think you make copper? Gold and red. A red and a yellow make copper, right? So if you mix these two together, you know that it's gonna have a little bit more red with a little bit of yellow in there. Really cool because this is gonna make you incredible artists. The only thing that you have to remember, if it's opaque, the color is opaque, can you see through this? No, right? Can't see through this. So what does that mean? Is it gonna be a little darker or is it gonna be a little lighter? Darker. A little darker. So now, and this is a permanent color. Permanent color goes in because permanent color has ammonia in it. This one happens to have the least amount. It's almost organic. It's like the closest thing to organic without saying that it's organic. We love, love, love the, the hair. The, uh, it's called micro uh, fiber chrome. Oh my gosh, it's so outstandingly rich, illuminous, vibrant, that keeps the health of the hair the nicest ever. The health of the hair, the nicest ever. It is one of my favorite, favorite colors that I've ever used and I've done color for a long time, long time. Um, so color touch is a semi-permanent color. This is a stain. Stains are like wood, right? You take a piece of wood, you get a stain and you just wipe it on there and it is absorbing into the wood. Well, when you put a stain on hair, it absorbs into the hair. It lays on there. It does not blow the cuticle up. 20 volume peroxide blows up cuticle. It's like your gas in your car. You know, you, you have to push that gas as peroxide. Peroxide will, 20 volume, will absolutely bust open that cuticle, deposit the dye molecules, and most of the time you have to use permanent color for um, gray hair and or if you're lifting levels up. If you're taking somebody from a black to like a brownish chocolatey brown, you're gonna be needing some power. So your peroxide, your gas, your power, you might have to use a 30 or a 40, but it's a permanent color. It will open up that cuticle and make it lighter. Um, uh, this, this is a, a semi-permanent, which is still opaque though. These are both semi-permanent. Two colors. Now remember, if you're gonna look at what tone number six is, Francesca, what tone is number six? Let's see, now remember, it's different because you gotta go to your Wella. Yep, okay, so you're knowing this is a level four, which is like a brown, and then a six is violet. All right, so, but it's also opaque. Shades EQ is a sheer curtain. Sheer. So this is important to know because when you really want to cover something, you want to make sure, do you want it sheer? Because then you're going to use uh, shades or do you want it um, more opaque? This is going to be a little darker. This tone is going to take better. It's going to take stronger. It's going to take a little more. If you got blonde, blonde, blonde hair, do you think it's going to take super fast? It'll absorb it quick because you blew out that cuticle and it's porous. It's like a sponge. Think of a sponge that like is not wet yet and then you wet that sucker, it's like it instantly soaks up whatever it is you wipe. So that is really important to know. And a new color is the other line by Daveness, but we really use the mask. I used to use a new color. It's a whole different system. Um, and that's where sometimes you have to really uh, no, I've never seen another system like a new color, ever. So it's a little, it's so different. Uh, that's why I don't really use it anymore, but I really love the Daveness. All right, so we also came up with a new word and it's called sheer pake. Yeah, she, she pake? She pake, sheer pake. So it's in between a sheer and opaque, sheer pake, that's it. We were gonna say show pake, but we're saying sheer pake. They made foliage, foil and balayage. Well, we're doing opaque and sheer to make sheer pake. 
okay? And that is when it you mix them together. So I love mixing these two together. That's my favorite ultimate because this is what you get. Sheer Pake, it's kind of like, you can somewhat see through it, but not fully exactly, right? Now the sheer one, you can see through it so much more. It's so much lighter. So when you mix these babies together, it is absolutely beautiful and that's what you get. Sheer peak. You have that, you know, you can kind of see through this, but not exactly. So, you know, in, in the color line, they say don't mix stuff. Well, let me tell you, my old boss taught me some really good tricks and, uh, and also all from Bumble and Bumble, the different things that they teach you. You can totally mix these two together. So now we are going to play. Now you guys get a better understanding. We're gonna take your um, construction papers and we're gonna take your primary colors and we are going to create colors on the construction paper. So what's the construction paper, girls? That's your canvas, that's the hair, very good. And then what are the colors, the primary colors, what are they called? Tones. Okay, so we're gonna put tone on hair so you can see what colors are gonna come out like. All right guys, so I would like you guys to make your own color wheel. Why do we always want to redo something after we learn it? We wanna take action because if we imprint it in our mind, we remember it better. So that's what's really important. So now the girls are all just doing their own color wheel. Get it in your head, three primary colors. Memorize it. So it's yellow, and then we have red over here. Red, blue, and yellow. Just unbelievable and amazing that these three colors can make every other color in the whole entire world. So awesome. So Jenna, what color makes green? Right. What color makes green? Uh, red no. Oh wait, no, um, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of. I know. That's why it's good to memorize. Memorize. The more you imprint it in your brain, that's why it's good for you guys to see it. And something really important that I really um, love everybody to know and realize my most important goal is to make you think. Do you know Tony Robbins or somebody had said, I think it was either Dean Gracioso or Tony Robbins said, um, they did a study and 95% of people don't think. 3% think they think and they don't think and there's only about 2% that really think. I want you to be the 2%. I want you guys to be the 2% that thinks before you do something. Don't just do something because somebody's teaching you to do it. I actually want you to do it because you thought about what it is you're doing and what the outcome is gonna be. So, all right, so if we put blue, blue and yellow together, we get green. That's your secondary color. And you put secondary. So if we mix yellow and red, we get orange. Orange it is. And that's secondary, orange. So when we do highlights or balayage, and we have orange, see those highlights come out orange because they have such a dark level, like a level three or a two or a one. That's in your dark shades. And we get orange, what toner, what, what color are we gonna use in our toner? if they have orange. Blue. Yep, blue. See, because it's the opposite. Go ahead, put the other colors in there. Put the secondary colors in now. Right now, we're going back to skill. This is learning and educating and the skill part of it. Um, when you mix the three, right? If you mix the red and the yellow, you get orange. If you mix blue and yellow, you get green. If you mix red and, I mean, blue and red, you get purple. Now, the purple, marker that I had was not really purple, it almost looked pink. And then we just took a blue marker, right, because we were adding it, and it actually made purple. Look how cool. So all I have to do is just finish that up. But I wanted you to see that purple in there. 
right? Even Usually it works better with um, watercolors, but it really worked even with this. It made it a beautiful purple because I didn't have a purple marker. As long as you got these three markers, you're in. You can make any color you want. All right, so you girls are all ready. Yep, we're all done. So now we're gonna take construction paper and we are gonna start doing tones on construction paper. So I wanna ask a pop quiz. Is this opaque or is this sheer? Okay. Opaque. And what's opaque? Can you see through it? Can't see through it, right? Is Shade DQ opaque or sheer? I mean, uh, opaque or sheer? Sheer. Sheer. All right. And then alumina. Opaque or sheer? Sheer. Sheer. Tell me what the nine is. A level. It's a level. Good girl. You guys are quick, boy. Look, A students I got here. What's the six? The tone. The tone. What tone is that? What do you have to look at? Red. What's the zero? Zero is so easy to remember, right? Zero, you just know in every color line across the board is neutral. All right, now I'm going to ask you, what's Davin S? It's in between, actually. It really is. It's not fully opaque. It is. What's our new word? Sheer opaque, right? It actually is mixing. Um, like an opaque color with a sheer and it made it beautiful because there's a lot of reflective light in here So I love it and these two mixed the, together would be Which I do all the time and I use 10 volume with it. What would these two mix together be? Sheer opaque. you guys are great right on and what would a 4 and be be? Neutral blue natural I think it's more blue it says well it says maple so it's it could be the brown too. So that you'd have to get the little system from Shades EQ. And that's the only thing that you need to know. When you have a new color line, you need to look at what their system is. And then you'll, learn, you'll know how to do any color line. Okay, and now let me do one more. Okay. What is a 9-1? I want... Right, you guys got it getting easier, right? What if it was a 9-3? Yep, be a light blonde with gold. What if it was a 9-4? Good. What if it was a 3-4, which is a real popular one. I want you to know a 3-4, so if it was a 8-3-4, 7-3-4, a 9-3-4, what color? Well, look at the, what's the three? If the three is first, which one would it have a little more of? It'd be more of a strawberry blonde. The gold would be first, and the second number would be the four. So whatever number comes first after the level is what there's more of? Yep. Bam. Okay, so here, I have this one right here. Is it like 75 and 25? No, I think it's, it's, it's just a little bit more. Okay. You know, there's not really a full formula for it, but you know that they're both in there. So... A seven is what level? Look on your level finder. Yep, good girl, man. Look at you go. Love it. What's the eight? <clears throat> it's the tone. Okay, so we would look at, listen, you have to look at, make sure you look at Wella. Remember, you got to look at Wella. So what's the eight? Yes. That's why it's important to make sure you know the system. <clears throat> For any salon owner, uh, I would suggest you make these for your girls because they are so imperative and so important and they really, really work. You could look on this and you could know right away what's in that color. And what's the second, um, Francesca, second number in this? Eight, one. One, uh, gray. Mm -hmm. So it's a gray with a little bit of pearl. And what's pearl? Blue. Gray. Has a little bit of everything in there, right? It's like a, a pretty pearl with like white with a little bit of iridescent colors in there and that's what you think of so if you want to cut something and you don't really want to cut it so much or have a tone to it necessarily I would always use pearl pearl is a great great one to use it's a secondary number so the vi uh, the pearl is first yeah so this is a great one that makes it a little iridescent all right so what's the seven seven three first the level 
Dark blonde. And what's the seven? This is a different one. It's beige. Yep, and then what's the next one? A three. Yep. You memorize these, you'll know these colors so quick. Yeah, it's not fully neutral, but it's, yeah, but it's a little bit like neutral, but really it's not a zero. Yeah. So remember. Would you think it's a little bit more cool or warm? Mm, it's probably in the middle. You know, it's not a full neutral, so it's probably a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, for a little bit of beige. It's a yellow, so mix. Mix on your art, your little paint thing. If you mix, so remember, a yellow and a blue make green, but if you're mixing, Lizzie, if you're mixing a green and a yellow, not going to be really neutral because it doesn't have all the colors in it. Yeah. But what color do you think that will be? Um, we'll mix it and see. Green, yellow. It's probably going to be somewhat of a bluish green, mm -hmm. right? Like muddy. I want you to do it on the next page. I want you guys to start start taking some colors and mixing them to make these colors. Okay, so it's a wrap. Uh, the girls did an incredible job. They did their own color wheel, which I love yellow, red, blue, and then you mix those two together, you get that, you mix those two together, you get that, you mix those two together, you get that. Then we went to tones. And basically, the warm tones are the red, orange, yellow, cool tones are blue, green, and purple. And then, and why do I want you guys to make sure you do this too? Because you want to memorize it. You want it to be second, you don't want to even think about it. You want it to be a knee-jerk reaction. You know when you hit the funny bone, it just kicks out? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. You want it to imprint in your mind because you will be an outstanding colorist. Time is valuable. So you want to maximize your time? Memorize this. And this is the levels from one to 10. This is what we look for in every single hair and we used construction paper to do it. So I want to find out how much you guys learned in this section. So I'm going to bring one up at a time, Gianna. And I want to tell you a little story about Gianna. So I went to her school. How did I find these beautiful, amazing young girls? I went to their school and did mindset, and then I did um, hair, uh, you know, a hair demonstration, a hair model. So Gianna was in the school, and she was the first one up there when I started to cut the hair. And I said, "Does anybody want to try?" She ran up there, and I thought, "Oh, I want that one." Well, what happened was she had another job. So I was like, "Really? I want you. You're really good." And she's like. Oh, not right now, no, no. So a year goes by, and then we basically, she reached out to me and said, oh, I see that you have a job offer. Um, I'd like to come, and I said, all right, well, I wanna meet you. And then she gave me her number, and I realized I had her in my number already because I wanted her last year. And then I said, oh my God, you're the one I wanted. So that was it. <laughs> so how did you like today's class? I loved it. It really helped me understand the color a lot more than what I used to learn. I mean, understand. Um, yeah, like just mixing colors and like seeing what creates what, that helped me a lot. A lot, right? So, would you know how to read this color now? Yes. Tell yes. me how to... It would be a, either like a dark, a light brown or a dark blonde. Um, the six would be, like six would be mahogany. Good girl, she's got it! And the four would be copper. Like a red or a copper, yep, depending on which color line. Excellent, A plus, great job, Diana. So now we're gonna get Jenna up here. Now this is Jenna's book. And you can see everybody's book. Everybody's different, but they all did an incredible job. And let them be them, that's what I love. So how did you like this class? Um, I loved it also. Um, I like it so much because I like like painting, like all in that feel, like just the art way of it. And I feel like mixing the colors together, like you really get to see it how it really is. Like, that's what you wanna say. And Jenna, why, when I came to your class, what made you want to come and work for me? Your mindset. That's the key. Did you hear her? How do you like the mindset training that we do before we usually do even any color? I mean, any uh, hair models? I think it helps me a lot and like the girls as well because to be able to communicate with other people, you have to learn how to like love yourself and be able to be okay with yourself so you could talk to other people and communicate well. And that's where like communication is a really big part of it as well. Because all day you're talking to other people. And I mean, sometimes it could be like you have an off day, but their problems come before yours. So just have to put a smile on your face no matter what. So good. Thank you so much, honey. I appreciate it. 
Like these girls are great, right? They're learning a lot and they're sponges. Francesca? All right, so how did you, what did you get out of today? So I want you to know last week I was teaching them a little quick theory in the back um, with our color line, but she couldn't see it. So she's the one that inspired me to really go all out with the construction paper, all the color um, paints and everything. So she was my inspiration for that. So why did this make a difference? Um, I'm a visual learner and I know that like a lot of people are too. So actually like seeing it and being able to like mix it together and like just see it, I guess, is easier to like memorize the numbers. Like, oh, if that tone is with this tone, then we can get this one. Or it's like, oh, if there's too much orange in my hair, we can do like a blue toner and make it more of a neutral and a more ashy, I guess I would mm. say. So, yeah. Honey, That's how that. how much more confident are you now oh, doing definitely color? definitely a lot more com like confident about it. Because I remember when we would do stuff here and can you mix this and this with me? I was always like, okay, wait, so if I... But now that I, I know the numbers and I know the tones with the numbers, I won't second guess myself. It makes her a quicker, faster, more efficient hairdresser. And yes, they're assistants right now, but they're junior stylists as well. We're kind of, they're shadowing everybody and they're, we're getting them up. That's why we do a boot camp every Monday, because we're really getting them to a quick, fast track. But they're learning theory and learning mindset. How do you like the mindset as well? I like the mindset too. Has that helped you? Oh, I think it's so important to like, if you are stressed about something, you can either talk about it or you can ask like for advice, like how could I change my view on this? And then it's kind of like you're calm and I feel like if you start the day like anxious and like angry about something, then it's going to like show off to your clients too and then they're going to be like, is she in a good mood? She should be doing my hair today. Like, am I safe? So you have to like breathe and you have to trust yourself and then trust the clients too. amen honey that's the key love yourself and this is our my mantra i am enough i've always been enough and i will always be enough and actually to believe that because if you love yourself enough you can overflow your goodness out into other people thank you so much honey all right lizzie so lizzie you've been here how much did you get out of this class and tell tell what you knew already okay um I did know a lot of it already, like I, I knew all of the levels, I knew like the underlying pigments of the levels, I knew like what colors cancel out, what colors, Good. Um, but I definitely feel like the visual aspect of it was nice, cause and like being hands on with it definitely like imprinted it a little bit more, and it made a little bit more sense like earlier when you were showing us the tones of the color line and I was like oh like I didn't know that green and yellow makes beige like I always wondered like what is beige yeah there you go so like that was something that like clicked for me um, how do you make pink red and white right and basically you just use white and make it lighter and lighter and lighter and then you get pink so the color theory was awesome and I so thank you and she's doing a killer amazing great job and you worked other places too before didn't you I did um, work at another salon for a brief period of time before, while I was still in school. Um, and then I know, then I ended up switching here because the atmosphere and the energy was completely different. In the other salon, there was a lot more girls there. Um, at the other salon, the atmosphere was very like negative and like they all talked badly about each other. There was no education. Toxic, that's called so, toxic. This is definitely completely different and a healthier environment to be in. And it's so good. You can't grow good and really well without being in a healthy environment. And that's our goal, is to produce goodness, wellness, an incredible, amazing um, environment. Is it perfect? No, because there's no such thing. But let me tell you, we have an A-plus staff and A-plus girls, and we all work together good as a team. That's the important part. Teamwork makes a dream work. You're all set. Thank you so much. So that was about the color theory and also about mindset. How much we need to master the mind to be able to put it, to, to get it in front of you like Francesca needed all those visuals. And even though Lizzie knew a lot of it already, it still gave her more. Remember, you learn a little and then you learn a little more and then you learn, listen, learning is limitless. It just keeps going. So the more that we stay on the trends and the new things that we're doing, the better and the, the more, um, I want to say, confident and filled with courage that you will have because you'll know a lot more and be much more educated. So now we're going to do our foliage 
It's foil and balayage mixed together. And the reason why I love that, balayage is a little harder because it pulls a lot of brass and warmth. And you'll know in the, the um, class that we had today, people hate brass. They hate orange. So balayage, to put the balayage in a foil makes it beautiful because you can get whatever color you really want and you can tone it to whatever color and it comes out like good the first time. Otherwise, if you balayage, it usually takes two or three times to get to the goal. So we're excited. Be with us and you'll join us to get to see this amazing balayage.